All right. Well, welcome to the third interview in Mr. Harris's um, interview series with uh, professionals in the theater world. Uh, the first interview we had was with Cameron Ware, who is a production uh, pr projection specialist. And then we interviewed Rose Labar uh, the other day. And so now we're going to interview Lindsay Jones. The special thing about Lindsay Jones is that she and I go way back, well, not way back, but back far enough to where we've known each other for quite a bit. Uh, Lindsay was a former student of mine and just showed amazing, like, moxie and just crazy good skills at a young age. And so she is actually a stage management major at Pace University. I think you're getting close to graduating, right? Yeah, one more year. Okay. But she has stage managed shows, a show, and other shows, but mainly a show off Broadway. So we're going to talk with her about that today. So I'm going to let, she's got kind of a delay. So I'm going to let her talk a little bit about herself, where she's from, where she lives now, what she kind of does, and then we'll get started in some of these questions. So Lindsay, take it away. Hi guys, um, my name is Lindsay. I was a student of Harris's um, at Leander. I graduated in 2015. I moved to New York in 2017 and I started my um, stage management career there. I'm a student at Pace University, like you said, I've been there for three years now. And my first professional stage management job was working at a very small theater downtown off off Broadway um, on a Fiddler on the Roof revival in Yiddish. And I have no experience in the Yiddish language. I still don't speak Yiddish. Um, I have only been around people that have spoken Yiddish since I've moved to New York. I've never heard it in Texas before. Um, and that show was just it really took off in a way that nobody really expected and it kept getting extended and extended the contract kept getting pushed back and then we transferred to the largest off-broadway theater in new york and the way that they designate um theaters in new york is by seat size and so we were two seats away from having a broadway designation um which was amazing and i was the assistant stage manager there for a while and then I moved up and I became their full-time stage manager towards the end of their run, which meant that I wasn't just running the deck backstage, but I was also calling the show and um, I ran it as a production stage manager for a week in the final run, um, whenever the regular um, production stage manager was on vacation. Now that theater has taken a step back right now with everything going on, um, everybody's career is kind of a big question mark. So we're trying to see what's gonna happen next. We know what you do and how long you've been doing that. So um, what does a typical work day look like for you? So my favorite thing about stage management is that it really depends on what kind of gig I'm working on at the time and at what stage in the process I'm in. So if I'm working on a larger show and we're in rehearsals, which is typically a four week process, for me, rehearsals typically start at 10 a.m., which means that as a stage manager, I'm usually there at 9, setting up the room and getting everybody ready, preparing hospitality, coffee, setting up, things like that. Um, and then we go until 5 p.m., whenever the actors are released. And then typically there will be production meetings afterwards, or we have to break down the room or move around rehearsal materials for another hour. So I'll usually leave around six. Um, in that period of time, the actors are in the room. It really depends on how the director works. So on um, Fiddler, the director, Joel Gray, um, I don't know if you guys have seen Cabaret, but he's in that. Um, he moved really intensely on blocking. And so we would spend the entire day in the room um, blocking scenes over and over and over again until they were how he liked, and then we were able to move on. Um, whenever we moved into Tech Week, um, I'm sure all of you guys have experience in Tech Week, um, it is the same awful process <laughs> whenever you move up. Um, so those can last um, for about 12 hours a day. Um, you typically do two 12-hour days in a week, and the rest is a five-hour day. And then my favorite part of the process, which is when you're in a run, is because I only have to show up to the theater an hour before the show. And you 
observe crew call, making sure that everybody is getting the show ready, things are being set up on time, making sure that things are being swept. You make sure that the actors are showing up on time uh, a half hour before the show to get into their costume and makeup. And then once the show starts, you do the same thing every single day. You either are calling the show the same way or you're checking backstage to make sure the props are going on at the right time, making sure that the crew members are moving scenery at the right time. And then once the show comes down, you I get to write my report and then I leave. That's so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, was, there was something you said in there that was like, oh, they might know Joel Gray as the original wizard in Wicked. They might not have seen Oh, him. right. He's a pretty mm -hmm. famous guy. He's also famous for having the daughter, Jennifer Gray, who is baby in Dirty Dancing. So, Did you ever get to meet her? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah cool. she came to a couple of shows. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. She was on Dancing with the Stars, I remember. Um, so what do you like best about your job and why? And then what do you like least about your job and why? I really love having the personal connection with actors and directors. Um, I found that the thing that has helped me excel really well is that I've been able to um, kind of bridge that gap um, personality wise and connecting with the creatives and so being able to have those relationships um, and be part of the creative process in a way that's not necessarily creative but is more of um, a facilitator has been really rewarding for me and just having those friendships. The thing that I like the least, um, it's only really started once I started working on bigger shows but whenever there are but I, but now that I'm looking back on it, I see how you can relate this to a lot of um, starting out work is whenever you have producers in the room or people who are helping fund the show or otherwise contribute to the show that are not necessarily part of the creative process and you start having a lot of things you have to juggle and um, inputs that you wouldn't necessarily take into consideration otherwise and having to learn how to save face and talk to those people and make sure that their opinions are held, but not also giving them leeway to impact the process. Thanks, Nate. I'm recording this, so I can't have uh, student faces on here. But you're welcome. It's more of a listening and watching thing, okay? Um, did, I, did you say what you least liked about it? Because I was trying to get people in here, so. Oh, yeah, no, I was just, uh, I did. <laughs> okay, okay, good deal. All right. Um, what led you to your current job? Um, so this job is entirely about connections. Building your resume is wonderful and is super, super important for whenever you start getting to the interview stage. But you're not going to start getting interviews until you start making connections with people that like you and they want to hire you because they've worked with you before. And so the way that I got this Fiddler job was I was doing a student showcase at my university and the director of the student showcase um, we really connected and we really had a nice bond and I was able to take care of her in a way that she appreciated. And so she said, oh, we're putting up this small one month show um, over at this show, over at this theater downtown. I think you should come on as a PA, production assistant and work on it. Um, I've had a really great time working with you. And so I interviewed for it. And over the course of interviewing, um, the production manager who I was speaking with really, liked me and really liked my resume and liked what I had to say. And so instead of hiring me for the production, for the production assistant position, they ended up hiring me as the assistant stage manager. And that's how I got started on Fiddler. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. That's awesome. So good. All right. Um, what type of interest, abilities, and skills would help a person to be successful for your occupation? I think tone and understanding how you come across when you're talking to people is the single most important thing that you can really work on right now. Um, how you come across in emails, how you come across to talking to people and making sure that you are not coming across as overly stern or overly aggressive. Um, and so that obviously folds into people's skills as like a larger bubble, but I think tone is the number one thing that I can impart. And in school, we've been having a lot of interviews with a lot of Broadway stage managers. Um, 
online lately and that's the number one thing they've been saying as well so if you can start practicing it right now then you'll be golden um, besides that having a really good eye for paperwork and making sure that you are double and triple checking all your work before you turn it in because you never know who's gonna be reading the things that you make um, you'd be surprised at how many producers or uh, managers actually come over your paperwork um, to get an idea of what it is they're paying for or what's happening in the room whenever they're not there and so making sure that you have a really good eye for detail keep talking. I try not to talk because it, it interrupts and I, I pop on the screen. Nobody wants to see that. So um, <laughs> we're trying to make that better there. So let's see here. Um, what type of education, training, technical knowledge or experience is necessary for your kind of work? So this is um, a little bit debated. I would say that if you want to be um, a stage manager in New York, you do need to get a degree in stage management. Um, some people have different opinions and if you need to go to grad school and get a master's degree. Um, I am not planning on doing that. Um, I feel like I already have my foot in the door enough right now in the industry to be able to not need to go to grad school. But I would recommend if stage management or any other type of management um, thing that you're interested in getting a degree in that field um, making sure that you're using your computer in a way that is smart um, which I mean I'm sure that all of you are proficient with but making sure that you know how to use Excel and Word and you understand how to format things and you know it not just well enough to use it but in order to teach it because most of your directors that you're going to be working with are like over the age of 60 or 70 and a lot of them are not super great with using their computers for meetings or for the paperwork you're trying to show them and so knowing it to a degree in which you can teach it to other people is really important okay very good let's see the next question um how do you how do you use math reading writing business technology science skills in your job? Um, I use science a surprising amount in my job. Um, there's a lot of rehearsal props that you need to make and a lot of little fixes you need to make backstage um, and tiny little adjustments you tend to make for actors all the time that are like hands-on little projects. Um, and so I've made so many strange solutions for them and I've had to like make up um, glue adhesives and how to dissolve glue adhesive and things like that, that you'd never expect. Um, that's another one of my favorite things about stage management is that you are doing hands-on projects all the time for really silly reasons. Um, but I also am using um, reading and writing constantly because I am formatting reports and I am trying to get them out in a way to people um, that is both legible but is also conveying the information in the right way that I want to do it. And so understanding the purpose for why you're writing something instead of just having clinical information. Um, I would also say that I use math an insane amount because you're budgeting and you're tracking finances and you're adding in sales tax for different states depending on where you're traveling to do things like that. Okay. Um, what advice would you give a student who's interested in this career? <clears throat> I would say to at the very beginning of your job, at the very beginning of your work, to never turn down a job. Um, that's definitely how I started. I did a lot of PA work and I did a lot of um, really small projects at school. And at times I felt really overwhelmed by the workload. Um, but taking those jobs is what creates connections. And like I said earlier, it's entirely about who you know, especially at the beginning. And having a really great resume is wonderful, but you're not going to get a job unless somebody knows you. All right. That's why I have my job because of people <laughs> it ain't what you can do although I can do my job but I'm saying it's a lot a lot about public so uh, real talk what type of starting position and salary would someone entering this field be likely to find um, yeah yeah, so the great thing about um, stage management is that you're part of a really strong union called um, Actors' Equity Association. You're not always part of the union. I worked as a stage manager for a while before I was able to join the union. And whenever you're working like that, your wages can be wildly unpredictable. Sometimes you get a stipend for $100 to do a three-week show, which is, you know, incredibly underpaid. Might as well be an internship. 
Um, but once you do join the union, there are set standard minimums of how much you have to get paid in order to take on a job. So for me, depending on, if, so for me on Fiddler, I made about $1,000 a week. And then whenever I moved up to call the show as the PSM for that one week in the final run, I made about $1,100 a week. Um, and of course, uh, some of that gets taken out for taxes and for my union dues and for my health care and um, pension and things like that. Um, but it really depends on what kind of contract you're working on. So starting out, I would say if you're not a member of the union, you can be prepared to find work for about three to five hundred dollars a week. So not a lot of money starting out. Not at all. <laughs> no, definitely. Which is why I'm starting out in college. And also living in New York City. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fun times. All right, let's see. Uh, do you have to depend on others in order to accomplish your job? Do you work in teams? Absolutely. Um, I think the teamwork is, I mean, the most important part of my job, hands down. I'm working with a team that you not only trust, but that you like. Um, I was in a situation for a little bit where one of my superiors was somebody that the rest of the team wasn't able to get along with and um, was a very harsh personality. And that really affected the entire run of the show. And it made things not run smoothly. And whenever a different person um, took over that job and it became a team that was cohesive and that everybody could work well with and the communication was there. It was like, I mean, every single day I went into work was amazing and wonderful and it, I was so happy. But besides that, um, the show ran smoother and the actors felt that they could trust us more, that they could come to us with problems they were having and trust that we had the facilities to get their problems taken care of in a way that was both appropriate but also quick. Cool. All right, um, has, are there certain times of the year that are busier than others? Um, absolutely, I would say the summer. Um, it, the summer and then right at the beginning of the year are the two busiest times. Um, right at the beginning of the year is typically when the new season starts for Broadway. And so there's a lot of things going up at one time. So for me personally, there's like PA work and there are concerts that I can work on. Like at the beginning of this year, I worked on a concert at Lincoln Center. I did the Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat concert there. Um, just because whenever a new season starts, you have actors that are in town and they want to put things up. And you have directors that are in town and want to put things up. And then in the summer, you have a lot of people that are doing either summer stocks or are doing workshop productions or stage readings. Um, and there's a lot of work in that as well. Okay. So my next question, what are the opportunities for advancement in your occupation? Um... For me, what I found is that working in the same job it has led me to other jobs. And working in the same job for a long period of time, eventually people start leaving and it allows you to move up. Um, stage management is one of those things where you will jump around from job to job all the time. My professor of stage management at Pace has worked on like 25 different Broadway shows, but in between all of those shows, he's jumping around to smaller workshops and um, readings and summer stocks um, around the country. And so you find yourself not, it's not always a, a strict up and down line for advancement. A lot of times you find that you are constantly taking jobs at different levels of the career um, throughout your trajectory. And so being willing to jump around, I think, and knowing that that doesn't necessarily mean that you weren't doing well um, is really important to keep in mind. Do certain directors like have their own stage managers that they continually use? Or is it just kind of? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. There's a director in particular that does that. His name is Michael Arden. Um, he directed the revival of um, Once on this Island, and he's done, um, I mean, a bunch of other things. And he always works with the same stage manager. He's worked with the same stage manager since he did um, the Spring Awakening revival, and he brings him along everywhere. And a lot of directors are like that. Um, once they find somebody that they really, really like, it becomes 
saying, okay, I'll do this show, but I get to pick who the stage manager is because that's who I trust to, to take care of my needs. So that's, that's a good deal. You want that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, do you think there um, are any other industries or positions where you could work with your skills and expertise? Yeah, um, um, production management and company management are things that are very readily accessible to me. Um, I worked in production management actually last summer. I took over for um, an off-Broadway show downtown for about a week. Um, and company management as well. It's just a different, it's, kind of using the same part of your brain, but in a different application. So for production management, it's a lot more big picture and getting the show ready instead of the day to day. And then company management, you rely more on the finances and taking care of the actors in that way and making sure that contracts are being followed. And it's more of the legal office coordination sort of thing. Um, but I know stage managers that have moved into directing and I know stage managers that have moved into um, performing. And so having that experience backstage and really knowing the ins and outs of the rehearsal room and that stage manager capacity can really only help you in other careers. So what part-time jobs, internships, or extracurricular activities would best prepare um, students for this occupation? Working on as many shows as possible, um, for one, kind of the only way you can learn stage management is in a um, hands-on capacity. I mean, of course, there's paperwork and protocols and contracts you can learn in a classroom, but um, my university is really focused on, we do productions multiple times every semester. Um, because, I mean, we're part of a big performing arts college, so we're able to do that. And that is, I mean, taking every show is really the only way that you can learn in advance. If you are part of any sort of academic club and understanding the functions of that, that's also really, really helpful. The only job that I ever had before I started working in theater is I worked at Raising Cane's Fried Chicken. Um, but even that helps me because I started to learn how different managers work um, in a capacity and understanding who to go to and like the hierarchy of a production. Very cool, very cool. So, um, students that are on here, McCann or Nate, do you have anything you'd like to ask Lindsay? I can unmute you if you need, or you can unmute yourself, I think. No questions? Okay. I'm well, thinking. Oh, oh they're, they're thinking. Well, I'll ask another question then while we're thinking. Um, so did you think in 2015 when you graduated from Leander High School, well, you kind of did because you really weren't there. You, that was a weird year. It's complicated. It was, it was complicated. <laughs> but did you think that this is where you would be at 23 years old? Um, absolutely not. I mean, I didn't think this is where I'd be whenever I was um, 19. I have been really, really fortunate in um, how quickly my career has progressed. Um, and I've been really, really fortunate to work with the creatives that I have. Um, and I really got really, really lucky on Fiddler. It really became down to, um, and of course I, I was able to work on it because I did my job well and somebody liked me, but the fact that I was in the same room with the person who would have been able to help me do that and the fact that you know she was willing to hire somebody like that was pure luck. And I think that that's how pretty much everybody will agree that their career started out is that they're in the right room with the right person at the right time and you just kind of got pulled along. So no, I still can't believe that I was able to do something like that. It was amazing. That's fantastic. Um, you know, Gatsma got canceled this year, right? Yeah, I saw. So, so they're doing a virtual Gatsma on the 31st of May. But tell me, tell, tell, my, tell mm -hmm. our students, like, they probably don't know what, so the Greater Austin High School Musical Theater Awards, if you don't do musical theater, you wouldn't know that. Most of my kids are tech kids, but some of my tech kids have been involved in the musicals. And we got nominated for, I think, um, one of the feature performers and best set, of course. Yes. Spring Awakening. Spring Awakening. But I, you know, this is the first time in, a, in, in since, um, since How to Succeed that I got nominated, we got nominated for set, like a school that I've done, which is mind blowing to me, especially um. after that anything goes set. It's just like, so crazy. But anyway, but um, yeah, 
that's that was good memories with Lindsay of, of how to succeed in business without really trying. Mm-hmm. It's a fun, fun, fun show. That yeah, it's fun. And so, but, but anyway, any so McCann, do you have a question? I do. So, um, how does the level of professionalism change between doing a high school show and an actual show? Because I've only stage managed high school shows, so it's like get off your phone, stop talking, don't run around the room. Like, what's the difference there? So that's a really, really great question, first of all. So there are so many levels um, for professional shows. Um, I kind of skipped a couple of levels whenever I started working. Usually you start working in either summer stocks or regional shows, things like that, before you start working um, in theater in New York. But the number one thing that changed for me is that your job like your job priorities completely shift and it's no longer about um, babysitting and it's no longer about, you know, saying, get off your phone, pay attention because really they can do whatever they want. I mean, at the end of the day, like theater is for the actors and sure people are coming to see amazing lights and amazing sets and all these amazing things that are happening. But at the end of the day, if the actors aren't in the room, then they're not paying to come and it's business. And so the way that you kind of talk to them changes a lot. Um, but at the same time, like they're getting paid to be there and so they can get fired and they can get changed and they can get charged or they can leave for any reason. And so they're not really goofing around as much and they're taking it a lot more seriously. Um, And you start to see that in, I mean, as soon as college productions, really, anybody that has to pay to be, anybody that is getting paid to be there or is doing it in like a competitive program, like a university setting, I think that that changes quite a bit. Truth. And and McCann, she dealt with the exact same issues that you deal with at Leander High School. It's not any different at any school. It's exactly the same. It's the same issues that I deal with. Um, there aren't, there's, if there's an elite high school program, like, and I believe that Leander and Austin are both elite high school programs, there's still a bunch of, you know, there's kids that just don't get it, especially in a musical where you've got 60 or 70 kids and, you know, the core group of kids is 20 or 30, those kids are serious and the other kids are like, eh, we're just here to having fun, you know, so they don't always quite get it. And then when the director gets upset with them or the stage manager gets upset with them, they, you know, they get hurt. And so it's kind of a weird dichotomy kind of sometimes with stuff so yeah i get that completely nate do you have a question maybe not all good well Lindsay, thanks so much do you have anything you parting words you want to share with our students um before we go um i I don't. I mean, I, I really hope that, um, especially those that are graduating, I hope that you have a really wonderful end of semester online. Um, I'm also going through the same thing with my school. So, you know, we'll see what the industry looks like whenever we're able to return to it. Awesome. McCann, send me an email and I will connect you with Lindsay so that you'll have a friend in the city when you go in the fall. Okay. Okay. I will. All right. <laughs> well, Lindsay, thanks so much for being with us today, and um, I love you much. You know, you know my heart's with you, yeah. and and um, you're one of my favorite kids yeah. of all time. And um, I hope that you're staying safe, and I can't <laughs> wait to get back to the city so we can go have breakfast at Balthazar's again. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, we'll see you later. Thanks, guys, for logging on. Okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.